All right, we're live. All right, good afternoon. This is the Senate Health and Welfare Committee meeting. It is May 18th. And we are going to look at two uh, proposals before us. One is JRH6. I think we'll take that one up first uh, for a vote. And Katie, you are here. Thank you for being here. So we have made no changes to JR, we, we have not recommended changes to JRH6 based on our testimony and information yesterday. So I'll open it up for discussion at this point. We did take a, we did take a, uh, a little vote, not a, not a formal vote, an informal show of hands where we supported the, the draft that came to us. So. Is there any discussion further committee? Go ahead, Ruth, Senator Hardy. Thank you. I just had a question based on our conversation in the Senate Democratic Caucus today. And I can ask that now, or if you wanna vote first and then I can ask it, whichever you prefer, Madam Chair. Well, it depends on what the question is. Well, okay, I'll, so I guess I'll ask it and then you can say if we wanna discuss it. So especially for, Josh and uh, Senator Terenzini and Senator Cummings who weren't there. Um, we had a discussion about JRH6. Um, there were a number of questions. And one of the questions was um, regarding the fact that we had gotten some testimony on adding language or findings related to Abenaki Vermonters or um, uh, indigenous um, people who live in Vermont. and. Um, I explained that given the, the the time and the lack of runway to make changes in bills and get them back and forth, that we did not make changes. Um, and uh, there was a question as to whether I would say in our my floor report on the bill on behalf of the committee, if we committed to making changes next session, was that what your understanding was based of that question or just working on the issue? Or I, I, I'm looking to you, Madam Chair, right. and, and want the committee to tell me what I should say. <laughs> so here's my suggestion. Let's, let's uh, see if there is a, a motion to um, vote on JRH6, and then we'll take this uh, up either as discussion or after we've completed our vote. Um, okay. At, yeah, that's, that's the next step, I think. Okay. But I'm glad you raised it. Katie, the, it's all set to go. It is. I don't have to prepare anything since no. you're just approving it. So. Right. Okay. All right. I would so, move to move JRH6 to um, out of committee onto the Senate floor. Okay. As introduced from the house. Okay. All right, any discussion? So I will say just in a bit in response to the questioning today about, or the concern about a lack of indigenous uh, folks in the resolution, the, at least the supporting documentation does talk about ethnic diversity and which is important in our state. So I, I feel, I don't feel that we're shortchanging anything at this point. Um, and I think that we can move ahead with the vote. Then we can talk about what, what it is we wanna say on the floor about any promises. So, okay, any discussion? Uh, Senator Terenzini, please um, call the roll. Uh, yes, uh, I will. Uh, Senator Good Terenzini vote. votes yes. Senator um, Hooker, please. Yes. Senator Cummings. Yes. Senator Hardy. Yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. Terrific. Five zero zero. All right. So Senator Hardy will get that up to the floor and it should be um, on the calendar for tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. Katie, I do have one question for you and it relates to the information that is or is not in the resolution relating to um, 
our Abnaki population or our um, Native American population and ethnic uh, groups from our state. As you look at that resolution, do you identify at least some reference to those group, to the group, or do you think it's totally lacking? Um, I'd have to look at each clause. Yeah. Um, we talk about inequities based on race generally. Yeah. Um, and then the next, the second whereas clause, um, we talk about systemic racism and um, social determinants of public health, all of which further adversely impact the health of people of color. The third whereas clause um, is specific to inequities uh, among Black and Latino people in the United States. The fourth whereas clause talks about Black residents. Fifth uh, whereas clause is, um, let's see, specific, or, or, or it's more general. It's um, race and ethnicity. Um, and then we have a whereas clause about the incidence of COVID and it's br broken down into categories by black Vermonters, Asian Vermonters, Hispanic Vermonters and the rate for other races. Um, so I'm assuming that's where um, indigenous persons would be in that kind of broad category, other races. Um, so I could keep going, but there, there are some places where the language is very specific to a particular group there are other places where the language is a little bit more general. Um, but of course, as was pointed out yesterday, there's no place where indigenous populations are, are specifically called out in this resolution. Okay, and then, uh, so Senator Hardy, as you're going through for the floor presentation and looking at the, <clears throat> the information, the underlying supporting documentation, uh, it might be helpful to see what is there. I'm going to do the same thing. But <clears throat> in terms of making a promise about what we may or may not do, I think we are certainly concerned about having our Abnaki um, population well represented as we correct um, inequities in the uh, in the past and, and move forward. So. Uh, Either you or I can say something like that. I think it's not a matter of promising to do something, but we're certainly aware and understand the need for change for for doing something. Go ahead. Okay, that sounds good. And I also will point out um, that we did make changes to H two ten um, that included specific findings and language, um, both relating specifically to indigenous and native American and Abenaki populations, but also, um, to broadly finding better terminology than using non-white. Um, and, uh, right. you know, Katie in particular worked hard to get that language right. And so I think that this committee has already shown a commitment to that. And so I, I guess I will underscore that as well. And then of course the, the um, eugenics policy um, and practices apology um, that we passed last week is also part of that. Um, so um, we have done some things um, already this session and there's certainly more work to do. And I, I think this and we're aware of it. To that. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 of course. So the, no, I think those are two good things to point okay. out. I think in particular S210. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. I just wanted guidance so I don't uh, say things that we don't all feel comfortable with. We don't want to make promises because sometimes you can't keep them, but um, we are certainly aware of the things that we would like to do. Great. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, um, and whether I get up and say, and get up, <laughs> whether I raise my hand to say anything, uh, we'll, we'll see what transpires. I think um, just knowing that there may be a, another alternative proposal coming forward, we'll see. Katie, thank you so much for your work on this and uh, taking the time from your family to be with us this afternoon. So I think we're good.
we're I think we're I think we're all set. You can you can launch off to commence to go forth. All right. Thank you.